In the previous video, we discussed the internal approximation. In this video, we're going to use this internal approximation to put together the finite element method. And we'll see how we can use it in dimension one in the next video and in the dimension two in the video after that. So as we were just saying in the previous video, uh, we have the internal approximation and what, what we can do, what we need to do first is to find a good decreasing sequence of spaces HH. Then what we will do is we will solve the linear system in HH to find the solution UH. And then we know that the limit of UH is the solution to the variational formulation, the one we're looking for to begin with. Okay, so numerically, of course, we won't compute the limit. What we will do is we'll choose an H which is small enough, so UH is close enough to its limit. Now, finding the good spaces HH is not necessarily something that is so easy. It requires some attention. Uh, it requires some attention because the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the interpolation operator uh, will uh, will be will be built properly. I mean, uh, we need to have a function R H, the interpolation operator, from a curly H to H H, such that for all v in curly H, the limit of v minus R H applied to v in norm H goes to zero. So, for instance, if you choose the Hilbert space H one, then you will need some regular functions in curly H. The second point of attention is when you actually build the rigidity matrix. Well, that matrix can be pretty big, so you want this matrix to be uh, with as many zeros as possible, I'm going to say. In other words, uh, if you have to store every single element component of the matrix, then you might have a problem with the memory of your computer, uh, it, it, will be a pro it can be a problem. So what you would like is to have a matrix which is called spar sparse matrix, which means with as many zeros as possible. And also that will behave properly uh, when you solve the linear system. Now the finite element method will consist of putting together uh, the spaces composed of piecewise polynomial continuous functions, and if H is separable, then there will exist a Hilbertian space uh, basis E K, and what we'll do is that we will basically consider the span of these E Ks, and R H will be the orthogonal projection from H to H H. Now. Again, finding such an Hilbertian basis needs to be done carefully because you will eventually have to solve the system AHUH equals BH. Now, you know, for, for most of us, when you say uh, solving a linear system, you're like, okay, well, that's something I've done, you know, when I was in high school, right? It's not complicated. We all know how to solve a linear system. Well, you know how to solve a linear system when it is a linear system of, uh, you know, say a three by three, even ten by ten is complicated, but you can, you know, you know how to do it. Now, when you're talking about a very uh, high dimensional matrix, then it can be tricky, and this is why we will have to have a specific chapter in this course, which is coming up in chapter seven, that we will actually look at the methods how can we uh, solve these linear systems. But already at this point, um, what I'm saying is that we will need to be careful when we actually have this matrix, this matrices AH. As we said, we want them to be sparse if possible, in other words, to store less data and also to have uh, faster computation. There is another point of attention, uh, which is that we need uh, the norm of AH uh, multiplied by the norm of the inverse of AH to be as small as possible, um, and that is called kappa. Uh, the, 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 this is called the condition number, and somehow it measures the sensitivity of the solution uh, UH to small errors on the right hand side on, on, on BH. And let me give you an example here, uh, basically if you 
um, you know, let me actually just 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 uh, do this here. Okay, let, let me just give you an example. It's, it's just easier to understand on an example. So I'm importing a NumPy in Python, and I'm currently defining here a matrix A. Uh, so here is uh, my matrix A that I'm typing in. Uh, and so uh, here is the matrix. Print A. I can make a mistake here. Okay, well, here here's the matrix. Uh, and then I'm going to enter a, a, a vector. So here's the vector B. And what I'm going to do is, well, print B. And what I'm going to do is to solve AX equals B, right? So you know, well, it's not very difficult to solve, by the way. I mean, obviously, considering A and B. Uh, I mean, we, even before we actually type the print X, we can actually figure out what is the solution. So x obviously uh, is, is pretty easy, isn't it? Okay. Uh, but now let me actually change b. I'm going to change b into another b, right? Okay, so I'm, I'm taking my, my b and I'm just changing it uh, slightly. It's a very, very small change, as you can see. And let me compute uh, the solution again. Is the solution close to the previous solution? Well, let's print it. Not exactly close, is it? So you see, a small variation in B will provide a not so small variation in, 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 in X. And this is due to the fact that if you compute the norm of A um, and you multiply it by the norm of A inverse, then you actually have a pretty big number. That is a condition number. And obviously, uh, you do not want this uh, with your rigidity matrix, that would be uh, a problem. Okay, uh, let me finish by a definition. Uh, let me finish this video by a definition. So PQ will be the polynomials of degrees more than Q with, uh, well, basically D variables. So uh, if you have D equal to, then P1 is the, the space of A plus BX plus CY. So obviously you could have three um, three, three components, A, B, and C. And if you're in dimension one, then you only have two, that's A plus B, X. That is going to be uh, P1. And with this, then we're going to uh, move on to the next video, where we're going to implement the P1 method in dimension one.